beautiful rural Quebec golf club on a wonderful Monday afternoon. It's our Thanksgiving weekend here in uh, Canada. And uh, we just spent the weekend, uh, you know, getting some wood together for the in-laws and my dad. And couldn't have a better, better video for you today on how to stay behind the ball and why you get in front of the ball. Really simple. So let's say I had a hammer and I wanted to hammer something into this, let's say, piece of wood. Notice how my head's in front and I can drive down and through that nail here. Now, if I want to drive the nail that way, which is what we're doing in golf, isn't it? So I'm going to set up over here and tag the nail into my piece of wood in that direction. So notice over the top versus hammer through if we have an axe in our hands. So let's say you're a lumberjack. I, I, I do my lumberjacking left-handed. So let's say I wanted to deliver the axe to the side of this tree. I have a tree in front of me. So notice where I set up to take this tree down. I don't set up with the tree and have to reach back. I'm setting up behind the tree. So when I heave the axe, notice I get out of the way so I can deliver that axe nicely into the side of the tree. So notice I don't need any instructions on don't sway in the backswing. None of you would ever do that. When you heave the ax, you'll notice you're using the trail leg. You're using the ground to heave that ax up and simultaneously you're taking yourself out of the way. So we're heaving and then we're using some nice momentum using the heft of the axe to deliver the blow. Now notice on the way down, I would never do that. I got no space. I can't get to the tree from here. So after I heave, the lead leg is going to use the ground to get my body out of the way. So I have access to the side of the tree. How much am I clearing? Well, if I over clear and I'm going to chip to the side of the tree, no good and I'm gonna throw myself out in front. So for those of you trying to clear your hips aggressively, you're throwing yourself out in front of the tree. Now you gotta reach back and lose all that lag and lose all that momentum and that compression. Whereas this keeps you behind the head. Now we're going that way. So how does that work in golf? Well, you just need to see the right task. So let's say I had a tee. Here's a dandelion stem <clears throat> and I've got my dandelion stem cutter, my grass whip. I get into my position. There's my ax. So I'm going to heave the ax, use the weight of the ax to cut through that stem. So notice as I heave, I don't drift away from it. I do, however, come up. Please don't do that. For those of you trying to keep your head down, you're just gonna drag yourself into the mud and throw yourself off balance. So when you heave, you come up. Then the brain's gotta go get the ground. You'll come back down. Use the ground to get your body out of the way so you can get all the way through that dandelion stem. So here's how it works. Heave, let it come through. So notice, got right through that dandelion stem. Now I put the actual dandelion. Now, my eyes are going to be right on that little sliver of grass between the leading edge of the club and the ball. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the weight of this arm club unit to heave and cut through the dandelion stem. First swing of the day. I just got back from a four hour drive in Montreal and that was absolutely pasted and nutted. And all I had to do is exactly the same thing as if I were heaving. And that was nutted as well, right through the center of the club face, still in the air, fabulous strike. So <clears throat> have a look at down the line here. Let's have some fun. And by the way, we got a new camera going on right now to do our our videos. So I hope you're enjoying what that looks like, right? So 
Here's my setup. Got my axe. Heave. Notice when I heave into my backswing how I can't heave off plane. If I heave behind me, I'm just going to take out my leg. If I heave out in front of me, I'm taking out my front leg. If I heave upwards, I'm just shaving bark into the ground. So, I see my stem, heave, cut through my stem. Fabulous contact. So, now all we have to do is figure out what angle blade we're gonna use. So watch, if I close my blade, I do this exact same heave, heave. See the diff? Notice how that ball went a little bit to the left where the other one went a little high right. So all we need to do now is as we cut through the stem, figure out what the, here, let's bring that back to that blue flag. Actually, my first one was pretty straight. So I see my dandelion stem. Notice how my head's behind the ball. You can see part of my left, uh, left side of my face. Still see it, still see it. Perfect, little draw coming back. And lovely, lovely contact. So let's do one more. See my stem? He, oh man, just beauty, right in the center of the face. So all those strikes were dead nuts in the center of that club face. So you can see how accurate a lumberjack can be in his or her efforts to cut down a tree. You have that same ability in golf. So when you're cutting through something along the ground, you'll stay behind it. If you try to hit at the ball, there you go out in front of it. So if the target disappears, you're going to get in front of it. Also, have a look at my alignment videos. So why you can't align properly that intermediate point that we have in front of the ball. So let's say I have this as my intermediate point, this white ball here. I'm gonna do a little fade. So I'm gonna go left edge of that over this red post back to the blue post. So when I heave, it feels like everything can fall to the left of that ball. So the intermediate point is also for your delivery. If you go straight towards your target, see that? And if I'm facing you, my swing is going 90 degrees to you. If I'm swinging towards you, my, my brain wants to see you face on, about face, binocular. This is gonna open my chest too much and throw me to the left of my target. So if I have an intermediate point in front of that ball, so let's say I'm staying left edge of this intermediate point. So I'm going to gather left and stay left. And notice now my ball is starting on an entirely different line because I now have that intermediate point. So if I go a little draw, I'm gonna go right edge, right edge, right edge. So notice how I'm using that intermediate point to help me deliver in the direction I want the ball to go. If I get to target, I'll get out in front. If I go through the intermediate point, then I'll stay behind. And you notice how my shoulders stay steeper through impact. They don't get over the top. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next week.